Today, we're going from this to this. So here's the deal guys. Last year we went to the Maker Central in Birmingham, England and it was amazing. We met a lot of great people and we actually met the guys from Shadow Foam and they sent us a package of stuff to use. It's been a year and guys we apologize. It has taken so long to get this video out but we finally came up with the perfect product for it. So today I'm going to use that Shadow Foam and I'm going to make the tool bench for my hobbies. Hobbies. But first, we got to clean this place up. And no better person in the world to do that than my beautiful bride, Amy. And while Amy's working on this, I'm going to go start building the box for the shadow foam. Honestly, you guys, it's pretty embarrassing showing you how bad the base plate room actually got. That kind of turned into our catch-all. So luckily, Amy and Gus are on it, and they're going to get that place looking awesome. Now what I need to do is I need to lay out how I want my box for the shadow foam and make my cut list. So we ended up getting three big pieces from shadow foam, but we had to cut one a few months ago for something and I can't remember what it was. So I decided just to use these three pieces. I ended up cutting everything at two inches wide. I cut two pieces at 61 and a half inches for the top and bottom, two pieces at 17 and a half inches for the sides, and then two pieces at 16 inches for the middle. Now, I probably should have made these like two and a quarter inches wide instead of just two inches wide because the foam is a little bit thicker than that. But luckily, once I put the back on the box, it all compressed and it actually held it in there really tight. So maybe two inches was the right call to begin with. Now I made several mistakes here. Mistake number one, I got in a hurry, which is always my number one mistake. Mistake number two was that I assumed that the shadow foam were square and I made this box pretty square. At least I, I think I did. I'm pretty sure I did, but the shadow foam wasn't exactly square. So when I put everything together, it was actually a little bit off. And if I would have just slowed down and taken a little bit more time, then I would have probably seen that before I put the box together itself. But when I started putting the shadow foam in the box to fit it, it actually was way too big and it popped the top of the box off right there. So what I ended up having to do was actually trim the pieces of shadow foam as opposed to cutting more pieces of wood. Now, I didn't trim it all that great, again, in a hurry, That'll be kind of a reoccurring theme with this project, but it worked out pretty good. The only problem was that my cuts weren't super square, so I ended up having to put some trim over the top of it to cover up my cuts. To put the whole thing together, I used wood glue and little brad nails. I think they're like inch and a half long. So that's why it didn't really stick. If I would have used screws, then when I put that shadow foam in there it might have stuck better but I'm pretty happy with this and while I'm doing that Amy's still cleaning this was definitely an all-day project you guys for the trim I used the same three-quarter inch pine and I cut them at an inch and a half wide I cut two pieces at 61 and a half inches for the top and bottom and then four pieces at 14 and a half inches for the ends and the middle. And I glued them, clamped them, and then nailed them the same way I did with the frame of the box. I let this sit for quite a while. That way I made sure the glue was able to dry. And one thing that's really important when you're building something like this, dry fit it first before you glue it and nail it because you can save yourself a lot of heartache doing that, which is honestly what I should have done to do the frame of the box. Once it was all dry, then I used the random orbital sander and I took off all of the sharp edges. I sanded this thing for like 30, 40 minutes, so it really gave it a good finished look. I also rounded the corners on the ends as well. Now, once it was all sanded, then I put six coats of clear on this thing because I wanted it to have a nice finished look. I really wanted this thing to look nice. 
As a side note, I want to apologize for the messy workbench and uh, pretty much just being a hillbilly. All right, so now that I got the box pretty much done, I just have to put the back on. I'm gonna lay out all my tools and figure out how I want them on the Shadow Foam itself. So there's a really good video by Shadow Foam and you can subscribe to their YouTube channel. They've got some great stuff on there that gives you a lot of cool ideas on how to use this stuff. They have a video where they show exactly how to cut these things out and go really into depth. This is my first time doing it, so I'm probably gonna fumble around quite a bit, but first thing I gotta do is lay out my tools, figure out where I want what to go, and then get to cutting. So here we go. Other than actually cutting out the shapes of the tools, this is the process that took the absolute longest to do. Because number one, I'm pretty indecisive. And number two is once you cut the shadow foam, then it's cut. Now they did give a kit with some glue and I'll show that here in a few minutes. But deciding where I wanted everything on the foam itself was pretty big task. It just was kind of like I don't know, you know what I mean? I wanted everything to be as organized as possible, but still wanted to have as much room as possible. So it was just one of those things that took a really, really long time. And it also changed multiple times throughout this whole process. So make sure that if you do something like this, take your time and really get it where you want it. Because once you cut it, that stuff's done. Now this is the kit that comes with Shadow Foam, and it comes with everything you need, including a little bit of glue to repair any cuts you made that might be wrong. I don't think once you cut something out that you can glue the pieces back in. That's probably a little bit more than it's able to do. Now basically when I watched the video Shadow Foam did, they said you want to hold it down with one hand and cut around it. We actually tried to do this with the router and the eighth inch spiral upcut bit, but it did not work at all, like at all. Basically all it did was burn the foam. So I ended up having to do this with the scalpel. But to be honest, it worked really well and it didn't take quite as long as I thought it would. Um, now granted, I have a lot of small punches and stuff like that, but if you have bigger tools, then it goes fairly quick and it peels out really easy. One thing you gotta be careful of though, is that when you are cutting this stuff out, the hand you're holding it down with, it will turn the tool. So a lot of my tools are actually crooked in the shadow foam and there's really no way to fix that. But, oh well, it is what it is. I'm still really happy with how it came out, how organized everything looks, and these tools stay in there really, really well. The gloves that come with the kit are like anti-cut gloves. Now these are size extra large. I'm a pretty small dude. Most of the time when people meet me, I hear the same thing. I thought you'd be taller. Well, I'm not. So these were actually kind of bulky to work with, but this scalpel is so sharp, I really didn't want to take a risk at cutting myself. So if you're gonna do this, be smart, wear the gloves, even if they don't fit you really well. It just takes one slip up and your finger's gone. And while I'm doing all this, Amy and Gus are getting the place cleaned up. It's looking better every time I go in there. As I was cutting out the spots for the tools in the shadow foam, something occurred to me. That trim on the top is gonna to take up some space. So I really wanted to be careful not to cut where that trim's gonna be. So I decided to just go ahead, put the foam in the box, and then put a plywood backer on top. Now I attach this with screws because if for whatever reason I wanna replace that foam, let's say I'm working on something and one of the crooked tools just drives me nuts and I have to order some more and redo it, I want the option to be able to take the back off of this thing. So I didn't glue it and I didn't use nails. I just used small little wood screws and I'm probably not gonna do that, but it's nice to have the option if I want it.
The only problem with this is now I have to lay out my tools all over again. But at least now I have a general idea of where I want everything. One thing I would recommend if you're gonna organize your tools in this way using the shadow foam, which by the way, I would recommend it big time. It looks awesome, it works really well, they hold the tools really well, and once you kind of get into it, it's really not that hard to do. But I didn't take any breaks. I'm trying to get this video done, I still gotta edit it, do all this stuff, so I was feeling a bit of a pressure crunch. But if you're gonna do this and you're not filming, take some breaks. By the time I was done with this, my hands were cramping up so stinking bad. It was uh, actually a little bit painful. Good Lord Almighty. Look at all this room. Dude, I have the best wife in the world. This is what she does. She's an organization, some would say freak, but I won't say that. We'll say guru. So now that this is all cleaned up, it's ready to go, ready to work in. Time to load the stuff in here and put my vice on the bench. Since the making of this video, I added a few things. We actually put the shadow foam on the wall with the French cleat. I added a bin from Harbor Freight for all my different small springs and parts and stuff. And my gosh, you guys, I love being in this room and working on my stuff for my hobbies. It is just awesome. Man, you guys, I cannot tell you how stoked I am. First of all, even doing base plates and stuff, it's so much nicer in here, so much cleaner. I love it. I'm looking forward to doing it. But even more than that, now I have my hobby bench all set up, ready to go. Now there's some stuff I'm probably gonna add to it. You can see that obviously I left a little bit of room in the shadow foam because I have some more tools coming in. They just haven't gotten here yet. And then I'm probably also gonna add some little bins and storage containers. That way I can have my parts all set up. But so far, I'm, I'm so stoked, man. So thank you guys so much for watching Shadow Foam. Thank you guys for sending us all of the stuff we needed to get this done. I really appreciate it, and we are so sorry it took 12 months, probably a little more, to get this video done. But we wanted to wait for the perfect project, and this is it. So, if you guys have any questions, you can shoot me an email, ryan at makeawoodsign.com. Hit that subscribe button, hit the like, and we will see you guys on the next one.